Thank you. Now we go to the final talk by Michael Gelfond on sets and language design. Michael? Okay. Just a second. The floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Can you see it? Yes. Everything's okay. fine. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to start with some preliminaries. Mm -hmm. uh, a large part of my work has been aimed at the design of formal languages suitable for knowledge representation and for declarative programs. It started in uh, about 1989 with design of answer set prologue denoted by ASP, which is one of the cornerstones of answer set programming, a popular knowledge representation declarative programming paradigm. I will need uh, uh, to give a one page introduction to ASP to make my further points clear. So, an ASP program can be viewed as a set of constraints used by a rational agent associated with a problem to build answer sets. Answer sets are collections of literals which can be interpreted in different ways. I interpret them as possible collections of the agent's beliefs. So let's look at an example. An ASQ program pi zero has a fact, P of A, which tells an agent associated with it to believe that P of A is true. The second fact uses classical and explicit algorithm. Strong negation. And it really says that agent must believe that P of B is false. The third is a rule which uses negation as failure. And it tells the reasoner that uh, it must believe P of C, given if, if he believes P of A, and if he has no reason to believe P of C. So this program defines an answer set consisting of reasoner's belief. He believes that P of A is true, that P of B is false, Q of C is true, and notice that P of C here is unknown. That's one of possible interpretation. Now, I'm going to talk about work on expanding ASP aggregates and about some lessons I learned from it. Uh, expanding ASP aggregates has been going on for quite a while and it proved to be a very challenging task. The literature offers many approaches which are not very compatible. Not always compared. There's no consensus at the moment, as far as I understand. In our recent work with Sherlin Jen, published in uh, AI Journal a few years ago, we designed a simple extension of ASP by aggregates and other set constructs, and we call it a log. The intent was to remedy some of the problems with existing approaches, including my own. I'm not going to talk about these problems as much as I'm going to talk about the principles, some of the principles we used in the design of it. And in this design, you're guided, by, you're guided by basic principles of language design. I learned most of these principles from very old work by Dijkstra and uh, Wirt and McCarthy and others, a slightly modified and adopted for knowledge representation languages. But basically, it's the same type of thing. In this talk, I'm going to give some examples of the use of such principles and argue for the importance in language design and language evaluation. So the first principle, clarity of informal description of basic concepts. I'd formulate it as follows. Informal description of basic concepts of the language should allow us to understand the meaning of the vast majority of its problems. Let's look at some example where it is not immediately clear. Consider an extension P1 of program P0. 
The first line here is the program you've seen before. The second one tells the uh, agent to believe R if, and here it says cardinality XP of X equals one. What's the answer to query R? It's kind of difficult to say because this depends on the meaning of this expression, X, P of X. And we have to first explain it informally, what it is we mean here. There are at least two ways to read X, P of X. One way is, it is a set of all terms T such as P of T is believed to be true. How do you see it? This expression denotes set P of A. And the answer to R is yes. The second way to read it is, as a set of all terms T, such as P of T is true. In this latter case, X P of X doesn't have a single denotation since the value of P of C is unknown. If P of C is true, then this expression denotes set consisting of two elements. Otherwise, it denotes a set consisting of one. Element. There are different ways to design and answer this program. The simplest one, probably the program can answer query R by maybe, or it can give conditional answers. So depending on how you explain it informally, you will be able to predict answer to our query. The second uh, principle called stability, informally equivalent transformation of a text should correspond to formally equivalent one. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, a couple of examples here. For instance, Replacement of variable x, bound variable x, in this expression by a new variable y should not change the meaning of the problem. That's how it normally is in mathematics. Similarly for the following, suppose f is some aggregate function on sets and you have an atom which says that f of this set x, of this set, of this set here, x, x, is greater than one. Now I'd like to replace it by f of this set is equal to y, where y is a new variable, of course, and y is greater than one. It seems, to, it seems like this transformation should not change the meaning of a problem. But in many approaches to aggregates, this transformation do change the meaning. So in this sense, they violate the principle of stability. I'd like to mention, of course, that these principles can be violated. Some of the principles are in conflict with each other. And so when we design a language, you have to strike a careful balance. But it's important to know when principles are violated. Michael, two, two minutes. Two minutes, thank you. The last one, elaboration tolerance. You said it should be possible to explain the language by new relevant constructs without substantial changes in the syntax and semantics. Uh, I learned the term from McCarthy uh, when it was used for programs. I believe it can be used for languages and any other type of designs. So for instance, semantics of A-log is obtained from semantics of ASP by just adding a new operation in the definition of ASP redact. You don't need to know what it is, but important part is just an addition, it's just one additional or two additional lines to some definition in previous language. In the previous language, nothing is changed. The same operation is added to introduce aggregates to two other languages, CR prolog and PLOG. CR prolog is an extension of prolog, which allows a form of abduction. And PLOG is an extension of ASP, allowing probabilistic reasoning, well, actually extension of CR prolog. So exactly the same type of thing. 
And finally, in addition to aggregates, a work allows a subset relation. The statement the student is ready to graduate if he has taken all the required classes can be represented by student S is ready to graduate if set of required classes is a subset of all classes taken by student S. I'm probably out of time, so let me ignore the second part. And the semantics of these constructs is defined similar to the semantic aggregate, only small additions to previous definitions and need. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Michael.